Yeah, let me introduce um, the intensity lens from the uh, optical bench point of view, and I will also like to share some of my uh, clinical data. I don't know, I think this is uh, not correct. The slides are kind of cutted. Yeah, that looks better. Thank you very much. So we work with a lot of companies, including Hanita, uh, when we do studies. Um, these are my financial disclosures. As you already said, it's a great uh, journey uh, we, are, we are going through the last, uh, let's say, 20 or 30 years, actually. And uh, at the moment, we have a lot of optical principles, the diffractive technology, refractive, segmental technology, um, lenses based on spherical aberration, small aperture, wavefront shaping, or high order asphere, no monofocal plus. So, uh, so many different things uh, which, are, which are coming up, and it's getting more and more confusing for everybody. And we now have several categories, monofocal plus, EDOF, trifocal. And we can say that the trifocal group is the only homogeneous group because they have uh, really, in most of the cases, they are all uh, diffractive. Sometimes they are hybrid, but in general they are diffractive. So it's a well-defined group. And if you want to do refractive uh, uh, lens exchange or you want to do cataract surgery and guarantee or promise a patient spectacle independence, there's only the one group of the trifocal IOLs. If you want to do that with the others, you have to do some kind of monovision or whatever, and you cannot really guarantee it. You have the problem of uh, uh, over-promising and under-delivering, and with the trifocal lens, it's just vice versa. The dynamic light utilization technology is a very nice concept for uh, Hanita to introduce a modern trifocal lens. Keep in mind that a panoptics uh, Artelisa tree is 20 years old technology when it was developed, started in the bench, then went through all the regulatory processes. These are very old lenses and uh, they are excellent lenses and they are gold standard, so to say, but uh, at that time people were not able to get into that detail like you can do nowadays when you develop a new, a new product. And as you already said, what they did is that they collect the light from five uh, foci and focus them, so to say, on, on three foci. And as uh, we have these foci of zero order, first or second, third, and this goes plus and minus, and if you go in one direction, you can overlap the foci and you can lose some light or can uh, reduce the quality. And if you uh, take the intermediate part at the zero order and then go to the first and uh, plus and uh, first minus, you can better use, uh, utilize the light. We use the professional uh, optical bench, these things where all the IOL companies also test and produce their lenses uh, uh, are um, made in a, in a, in a very uh, elaborative way. And when you test the optical quality, like the modulation transfer function and other things, you use this kind of machinery. And what we now can do is also that we can simulate defocus curves, visual acuity, uh, optical quality on the optical bench. And this is extremely close to the uh, real situation. And we've done a lot of studies actually proving that we can foresee that very well. There are certain uh, uh, conditions where you do that important is what kind of uh, cornea module you're using, you know, how much uh, operation it has, or it's operation neutral. Uh, it's important which kind of wave light uh, you take, if you take so-called polychromatic normal light, so to say, or specific uh, light. And all of this has been implemented in these studies. We compared here um, the intensity with the panoptics, Atelisa tree, and the synergy. Um, and you, I think most of you know the specifics of, of these lenses. Uh, they're all trifocal lenses. The Technus uh, Synergy is a mixture of the bifocal and, and the EDOF lens, so uh, bifocal and, and symphony, so to say. And the others are trifocal lenses or even pentafocal lenses like the uh, uh, panoptics. The idea was to look for non-inferiority so that the, if the lens the intensity is, is equal, uh, than the others. And you can see already here, when we look at the MTF curve, which gives us an idea about the uh, image quality, and you see the curves here at different spatial frequencies, that there's essentially no difference at far, intermediate, and near, at a three millimeter pupil, so to say. If you go for a four and a half millimeter pupil, you have the same, same outcome. Of course, if you have a larger pupil, you have a little bit more distribution. We can also correlate the MTF with a defocus like you see it here. And as Manfred already pointed out, if you look at the minus one between 
uh, minus 0.75 to minus 1.25, you see that the green line, the intensity, is way above the other uh, lenses. This can be seen quite nicely here. And then between two and three, they're all the same. And you can also correlate the defocus then with uh, visual acuity and simulate that. And again, you can see here exactly in the same area the uh, superiority of the intensity in that uh, specific uh, area. If you look at the distribution, so-called through-focus MTF, you can also see that some of these lenses are kind of bifocal, some are more trifocal with, with different variations and uh, the green uh, intensity you can see here is very similar to the others. If you look at the resolution, you see here that all these lenses go up to two and a half to three diopters to create a decent kind of uh, focal image. And if you look at the uh, point spec function, then you also see that intensity has a fairly low uh, profile here. There's a difference if you look at polychromatic light versus specific light. Our human uh, eye, uh, emetrope, is emetropic, so to say, for the green light uh, part. So monochromatic green light, uh, you can see at 546 nanometers, you can see actually a much better performance compared to the polychromatic light. So this uh, type of chromatic aberration, which is uh, also tested here, gives you an idea why you can see pretty good in the intermediate range with the intensity. Now I uh, talk about a little bit the first couple of eyes where we uh, implanted the uh, intensity. You see here the implantation procedure. Seven patients uh, uh, just uh, started with the, with the lens. Um, the very first patient, I used the Heigers formula to calculate it. We ended up slightly hyperopic, so I switched to the Barrett Universal 2, and then we were actually fine uh, and got up very nicely uh, uh, results. The interesting thing is the uh, visual acuity after three and six months, and then monocular versus binocular. There's a little typo here. The last column is uh, six months post of binocular. And uh, I use the LOCMA scale because it's a standard the way we do. And you see we are in all distances around zero LOCMA. That means 1.0. And also the standard deviation is extremely small. Yeah, so uncorrected distance, uncorrected intermediate, uncorrected near, it's all 1.0 between, between 0.8 and 1.0. And it becomes even better after six months, as you can see there, we reach minus LOCMA data, which means more than 1.0. So we were very happy uh, with these re results. And I actually implanted that also in some uh, medical colleagues and uh, uh, two friends from my tennis club. And they still talk to me. Um, then you see the defocus curve, and again, if you see uh, uh, the, the range here, LOCMA 0.1 is uh, 0.8 uh, in decimal, and you see you have a range here from 1 plus 1 to minus 2.5, almost, yeah, minus 2.75. So 3.75 diopters at this level of 0.1. And actually, for standardization, you take the 0.2 level to look at the... Uh, um, uh, the focus area, which is here almost uh, four and a half diopters. So you really get an extremely good visual acuity, in our cases, better than 0.8, almost 1.0, over a range of two to three diopters, uh, uh, as you can see here. This is the uncorrected binocular defocus curve, three months. Uh, this is the corrected, and there's not much effect because we really landed pretty, pretty nice with our IOL calculation and didn't have uh, much uh, residual astigmatism, as you can see, so it's almost identical. Binocularly, you can get uh, a little bit up, as you can see here, and this is after six months. Uh, yeah. So if we come to the conclusion, um, I explained to you that the fact that we have a more or less a flat uh, curve and much better intermediate performance than some of the standard uh, lenses could be seen in the lab and as Manfred also pointed out, could be seen in the clinic, especially also in, also in our patients. We have excellent defocus curve and visual acuity from at least 0.1 LOCMA or better uh, through a wide range of uh, dioptic power. And um, we think this is a very good and modern lens uh, much better than uh, uh, lenses that have been developed 20 years ago. 
And um, I think we will see much more of these type of, of lenses. Also interesting was a very uh, fast uh, neural adaptation in, in this process. And I think a better light distribution is some of the part that may also contribute to that. So thank you very much and I'm very happy to answer any question.